Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, we're going to be doing some Halloween decor. For my first project, I'm using this wood round that I got from Timu and I'm going to be adding some clay. So first of all, I have dusted my plastic and my rolling pin with cornstarch and now I'm rolling out my clay to about one to two mil thick and I'm going to then position it on my wood round and I'm going to have to do this a few times until I have my wood round covered. I don't need it completely covered. I like the jagged edge and it will add to that Halloween feel that we're going for but I'm just going to add the clay in bits and pieces. Remember, you can find a full product list in the description below and all of these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. So as you can see, I have rolled out some more clay and I'm just adding it in bits and pieces here and there and then using my rolling pin to sort of smooth them and blend them together. I don't want this clay to be super thick, but it does need to be thick enough for us to be able to do some impressions with stamps. Next, I'm going to be attaching my clay to my wood round with a strong wood glue and I'm just adding it in sections, just very carefully lifting up my clay and then putting it back down. Next, while my clay is still wet, I'm going to be using IOD's letterpress stamp and right now I'm just putting out the words for a fun little Halloween rhyme that I saw on Pinterest and I'm just pressing my stamps into the clay until I have an impression. I don't need it to be super deep or super defined. We're going for a rustic, whimsical Halloween look here. So I'm just going to work my way through until I have spelled out the entire little rhyme and I'm just playing around with spacing and if I make a mistake I can very carefully smooth out the clay but definitely take your time with this and sort of plan ahead. You can see I sort of position the stamps before I do any pressing down. If you're going to give this project a try yourself, this is definitely something that you can customize. You don't have to use the same rhyme as I am. You can see here that I have just changed the font that I was using for the word Halloween just to have a bit of emphasis on that. I'm then going to use an element from the Reverie stamp. I'm just using part of a stamp up the top there. And then I'm also using some of the swirls from the same stamp set. And you'll see, I'll just have a bit of a play with a bunch of elements from that one. It really is quite a versatile design. So I'm just grabbing out what I think will be suitable. I'm sort of holding it up against my design. And then once I'm happy with it, I'm pressing it into the clay. Keep in mind that if you don't have clay or you don't want to use clay, but you still like the general look of this project, that you could definitely use ink or paint to stamp this design on your wood round instead of pressing it into clay. Before my clay has dried, I'm going to give it one coat of Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. I like to do this as I find it minimizes shrinking and cracking. Not that I mind if I get some cracking in this project though, because it would just add to that spooky Halloween feel. As I'm painting, I am being careful not to let my paint pull in all of the details that we made with our impressions. I don't want to hide those. The next day I came in with some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear and I sealed the entire piece. This is going to seal and protect my paint but it's also going to be a great base for our next step. Once I have the coverage that I want I am going to use a microfiber cloth to buff off the excess. Next, I'm going to be using brown Bestang Wax and I have a smaller artist brush that I'm using to work that dark wax into the details that we created with our stamps. So I'm really working it in there because once I have that coverage in there where I want it to go, we're going to wipe back some of that excess and the clear wax underneath is going to give me the freedom to wipe back as much or as little as I want. You can see I'm also paying attention to the elements that we added, the florals and the wells and also any of the cracking as well because I want this to have a really spooky feel. I used brown wax for this so I could highlight the details and the impressions that I created but you could also try using a glaze or a paint wash for this step. Mm -hmm. 
anywhere that my wax got a little bit dark and I was unable to wipe back as much as I wanted, I came back in with some of the clear wax and this worked a little bit like an eraser. And anywhere that maybe I removed a little bit too much wax, I could always come back in and add a little bit more. This is just something that you will play with until you are happy with the result. To further highlight the details that we created with our stamp impressions and to give it a fun, vibrant feel, I'm adding some of Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax to the letters and some of the florals and the swirls that we created. So I'm just using a small artist brush to really concentrate that gold wax in those details. And if I go a little bit too heavy, I can always wipe it back with a baby wipe as long as I'm pretty quick to do that. Now, if you don't have gold wax, maybe you could come in with some sort of a gold paint pen or maybe a glaze. I also added some of the gold gilding wax just around the edge for just a touch of shine. Finally, on the back, I'm going to attach a hook for hanging, but to do this, because of how thin my wood round is, I cannot use a screw, so I'm going to use Gorilla Super Glue Gel. This sticks really well, and because this is quite a light piece, I don't have any worries about it being able to hold the weight. And here's our finished Halloween sign. I love how this turned out. I think adding the stamps to the clay as impressions as opposed to just stamping them like normal gives the piece some real depth and dimension. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. Our next project is a Pottery Barn dupe. I have a couple of these plastic pumpkins from a couple of seasons ago and we're going to give them a makeover. My first step is to pour out some of Dixie Belle's Coffee Bean Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a lovely black that has a hint of brown. I'm also adding sea spray texture additive to thicken up my paint and create some texture. Pottery Barn have these really beautiful black terracotta style pumpkins that we're going to try and replicate here today. So I started applying my mixture but I really felt like I wasn't getting the texture that I wanted so I switched to a natural bristle chip brush and that really did the trick so your brush really does have a lot to do with the texture you're going to create so I'm going to work my way around the pumpkin and add our sea spray and coffee bean mix and this is really creating a lovely terracotta stone sort of a look so i'm going to cover the entire pumpkin i did not do any sort of priming or anything on this these are for my home and i find that this chalk paint sticks really well and it's just a decor piece it is going to take two coats of this to get the coverage i want Once my two coats were dry, I sealed my little pumpkin with some of my clear wax. I'm using a natural bristle brush for this. So this is going to seal our little pumpkin, but it's also going to be a great base for our next step. While my wax is still wet, I'm using some of Dixie Belle's Ash Dixie Dirt. It's just like the name sounds, it looks like ash. It's a lovely gray tone that contrasts nicely with our coffee bean. So this is what's going to give us that pottery barn look. It's gonna make it look a little bit like weathered terracotta. And this will be something that you will add to your liking. You can add as much or as little as you want, but you do need to have wax or something down that the Dixie Dirt can stick to. So keep that in mind. I really tried to focus on the grooves and crevices on the pumpkin. I felt like the Dixie Dirt really brought out all those details beautifully. And I think that honestly, if you're not a fan of jack-o'-lanterns, you could just do this on a plain pumpkin as well. And I think that it's a lovely effect on that as well. If you don't have Dixie Dirt, you could try adding maybe a white wax that might create something a little bit similar. Or I've also seen some people using baking soda or baking powder to do this. And here's a look at the finished product. The 
this was a quick and easy flip, but I feel like it was very effective and I don't think these look like cheap little dollar store pumpkins anymore. Let me know if you think these look like the Pottery Barn ones. For our second pumpkin, I was inspired by some lighter weathered terracotta pumpkins that Pottery Barn has. So I'm applying a mixture of Dixie Belle's drop cloth chalk mineral paint that already has the sea spray mixture mixed into it. I started applying it by brushing it on, but I wasn't getting the look that I wanted. So I then started doing some dabbing and stippling instead. It's going to take two coats to get the coverage that I want on this pumpkin as well. Once my paint was dry, I used some of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat to seal my pumpkin and we are also going to need this for our next step. The Pottery Barn pumpkin that I'm trying to recreate here had some weathering on it. It also had some moss. So I'm going to be using Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain. I've watered it down a little bit. And then I'm using a fan brush to add some of that age that has looked like it's built up around the bottom. So I'm just going to add it in random areas where I think that age would appear. And then I'm also going to use a paper towel to wipe back some of the excess. For the moss sort of a look, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Bayou Moss Voodoo Gel Stain and I'm going to pour a little bit out and add a little bit of water and I'm just going to repeat the same process as before using my fan brush to add little bits of the product in random areas and then a paper towel to wipe back the excess. Now this is going to be to your liking. The Pottery Barn ones that I'm trying to recreate were very subtle. Again, this is going to be up to whatever look you want to achieve. Next, I'm going to add some Dixie Dirt, but in order for it to stick, I need to add some Easy Peasy Spray Wax. So I'm just spraying that on, and then I'm going to be using the same Dixie Dirt that we were using before in Ash. And I'm going to get a little bit on my brush, and then I'm just going to sort of dab it on so that little bits of it fall off on the pumpkin. And this is going to be random. There's no wrong or right way to do this. It's however much you want to add. So I just sort of added it and then you can also use a paper towel to wipe it back in certain areas. And here's a look at our second pumpkin. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that it is a sweet Halloween decoration, but that you could also turn it around and you could use this effect on just a plain pumpkin design if you wanted as well. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. For our final project today, I'm going to be recreating the poison apple from Snow White. So I have this plastic apple. I think I bought it on eBay a few years ago. We're going to get out the cornstarch again and I'm adding some to my plastic sheet and also to my rolling pin. I'm then going to take some of my Jovi air dry clay and I'm sort of pressing it out and then I'm going to use my rolling pin to get it to about two mil thick. I don't want this too thin because this is going to be the poison that sits and sort of drips down our apple. So I don't want it to be too thin. So I'm going to keep going until I have it about the width that I want. Before I add the clay to my apple, I'm going to pull the little stem out. I can reattach that later. And then I'm going to carefully peel my clay up from the plastic sheet that I was rolling it on. And I'm going to start to mold it to my apple. So I'm going to very carefully be pressing it. You'll see that I do a little bit of folding and tearing of the clay so that it actually goes around the apple and starts to conform to the shape. And at this point, I'm just sort of trying to make sure that I have the coverage I want because I am going to be tearing bits off because it's going to look like liquid pouring down. So I'm just going to keep shaping the clay until I'm happy with the basic design. 
So I'm just going to put some strong wood glue. This is a quick set glue and I'm just using my finger to spread it all around. You can see that the red from the apple is transferring to the clay. I'm not worried about this because I'm going to be painting that clay as well. So I'm just rubbing that glue wherever the clay is going to go and then I'm very carefully putting my clay back in place and then pressing down. Wherever my bits of clay sort of meet, I'm just using my fingers to smooth them together and then I'm going to start ripping more clay off. I don't want the whole apple covered. It's meant to look like the poison dripping down. So I'm just working my way around and pulling the bits of clay together that need to be pulled together and tearing off the excess clay. I'm then turning the apple upside down and adding some more glue so that we can attach the excess bits that we have torn around the bottom. I'm then going to use a baby wipe to wipe off any excess glue. Now I need to cut out the eyes and the nose that appear on the poison apple. So I'm going to start with the nose and I'm sort of making a triangle and then down the bottom I'm sort of pulling the bottom part up a little bit so it actually sort of looks like the nose in a skull. So I'm just using my craft knife to do that. Same with the eyes, I sort of cut out some oval shapes there and then I'm just using the knife to very carefully pull the clay up and then pulling it out. And anywhere that I have a bit of excess glue showing, I use a baby wipe to clean that up. I don't wanna have to paint the apple itself. I'm also going to use my craft knife to make the excess clay hanging down look a little bit more like dripping poison. So I'm just sort of curving the edges a little bit where I can. And again, this will be to your liking. It just depends what shape you want this to have. And you could also try this with paint if you wanted. I just feel like the clay was a lot easier to work with and to shape. I then grabbed the little stem from the apple and poked a hole before the clay had dried. When my clay had started to set, it's not completely dry, I gave it a few hours and then I came in with Dixie Belle's Cotton Chalk Mineral Paint. I really love the stark contrast of this paint with the red of the apple. You could definitely go with a green maybe to make it more obvious that it's poison. I just went with the white here because like I said, I like the contrast. So I'm just using a small artist brush to apply the paint. This is going to reduce cracking and shrinking because I'm doing it before the clay has completely dried and I'm just gonna work my way around and anywhere that I get excess paint, I can always wipe that off. Once that had dried, I came in with another thick coat and this time I'm trying to mimic the liquid sort of drippy look and I've got my paint really thick here and I'm applying it really thick and then I'm gonna speed up the drying process to add to that texture. Once my paint was completely dry, I added the little stem for the apple back where it was before. And here's our finished poison apple. This was such a fun project and I've always really loved Snow White. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's Halloween decor DIYs. I hope that you have got some ideas for how you can decorate your home on a budget. Let me know if you had a favorite project from today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. 
Thanks for watching.